Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're talking about a kind of growth medium for growing certain kinds of bacteria that's known as McConkie auger. <clears throat> so McConkie auger has some cool characteristics. It is a growth medium that is both selective and differential. Let's talk about what that means. So first of all, it's selective. specifically for gram-negative bacteria. This means that it allows gram-negative bacteria to grow while preventing the growth of gram-positive bacteria. It is also differential, meaning that it allows the distinction, or the sort of, it allows one to distinguish between different types of bacteria based on some visual component. So in the case of McConkie auger, it's differential for enteric bacilli that ferment lactose, meaning that it includes components that allow bacteria that ferment lactose to look different to the naked eye than those that do not ferment the lactose. Let's talk about how it does these things. So first of all, how is it selective for gram-negative bacteria? Well, it contains crystal violet and bile salts, and these actually inhibit the growth of gram-positive bacteria. So that's how it inhibits some bacteria while allowing other bacteria to grow. In terms of being differential, it contains lactose, which is of course sugar, or a form of sugar, I should say, a type of sugar, as well as the pH indicator known as neutral red. And this will change color to pink, sort of a reddish pink color, when the bacteria ferment this lactose that's present. So the media, when it's just a sterile McConkie auger plate with nothing growing on it, it's this yellowish color, but it contains lactose. And so if you put bacteria on it, they can ferment the lactose. They ferment the lactose that produces an acid byproduct. The acid that is produced lowers the pH and that causes the neutral red to change to this pink color, showing you that lactose fermentation is happening. And so there are, uh, so that, that, that's how you're able to make that distinction. So to distinguish between the non-fermenters and the fermenters, and that's what makes it differential. Something else to keep in mind is that some organisms, including species that um, are part of the Klebsiella genus or the Enterobacter genus, produce colonies that are known as mucoid colonies. Mucoid just meaning that they're, they're kind of wet and sticky looking. And that is due to the production of a capsule. So remember that a capsule is sort of um, a sticky um, carbohydrate based coat that can be outside the cell wall of a bacterium. Um, often this helps it hide from the immune system, so it makes it more virulent. So a capsule is considered a virulence factor. So Klebsiella and Enterobacter are some of the types of, of bacteria that can produce the mucoid colonies looking sticky and wet because they're using the lactose that is in this media to produce their capsules. And that's why, that's why they look like that. Another something to consider is that there is a special uh, type of McConkie auger called Sorbitol McConkie auger. Sorbitol is a sugar alcohol, so it's a type of carbohydrate, and it, this, this sorbitol McConkie auger contains additional selective components that will inhibit the growth of certain things, but allow the growth of a specific kind of E. coli. And so this is used to isolate this specific kind of E. coli. And specifically, it is enterohemorrhagic E. coli. It's the strain that's known as O, 157H7. And so these are basically different um, types of serologic identifications where the strain of E. coli has certain kinds of um, surface proteins. But really what this type of E. coli is known for is it's enterohemorrhagic, causing like bleeding in the gut. It is a really nasty kind of food poisoning that you can get. So it's frequently found in like contaminated um, food or water and can give food poisoning. 
But the way that the sorbitol McConkie auger works is it has some various inhibitory components to inhibit the growth of other kinds of bacteria. And then specifically, um, it's got sorbitol in it, um, which is sort of a different carbohydrate from lactose. And so the bacteria that can grow on the sorbitol McConkie auger plate that are colorless, that don't ferment sorbitol, that aren't capable of fermenting the sorbitol, those would be the enterohemorrhagic E. coli 0157H7. So this is a, just a special formulation of the McConkie auger that can help in the isolation of that particular um, kind of nasty pathogen. So now let's talk about what a McConkie auger plate looks like. Remember that initially it's going to be kind of a faint yellow color and it's going to be selective for gram-negative bacteria. So there's lots of gram-negative bacteria that can grow. E. coli, Klebsiella, Enterobacter, Salmonella, Proteus, Shigella, Yersinia. These are all types of gram-negative bacteria that can grow on a McConkie auger plate. Now, if they're lac-negative, meaning that they cannot ferment lactose, then the media is going to stay its regular yellow color. So you'll have bacterial growth, but no color change. If the bacteria are lac positive, like these are, that means they can ferment the lactose, um, creating an acid that lowers the pH, causes the neutral red to turn pink. And that means that you will have um, sort of where this bacterial growth is, um, a pink zone. So the, the, the plate will turn pink wherever you have the, the lactose fermentation happening. If you're interested in learning about other kinds of selective and differential auger, think like uh, mannitol salt auger or EMB auger, then check out my playlist on um, bacterial growth media. Um, but that's it for today, and thanks for watching Biology Professor.